Hi, in this video I'm going to look through some of the key things you need to know in order to pass Functional Skills Level 2 writing. What this video covers, a brief outline of how to achieve good marks in the writing exams, a look at some of the key techniques you will need to use, and what kind of knowledge you need to demonstrate. This is a typical writing question. Write a report for your local council about sports and recreation in your area. So what this does, first of all, is it tells you the text type that you need to write. So always get into the habit of underlining that. So write a report. Then it's important to know who you're actually writing for, because then that will tell you if it's formal or informal, and also what it's about. Now, they actually give you a really good hint. They give you these three bullet points, and they always give you these three bullet points in these kind of questions. So it says, in your report, you should describe the sports and facilities in your area, outline its positives and negatives and explain what you think you should change. Now, if you were to include any of these three bullet points within your um, within your report, then you would be marked down for that. Some people use this as a, as a simple structure. You know, they might have an introduction and a conclusion, and then they'd have three solid paragraphs um, based upon this. But just as long as you're ticking off these three areas, then you should be absolutely fine. To show your writing skills to the examiner, think about the following three elements. So we have show your range of punctuation, an appropriate level of detail, and a clear paragraphic. So for punctuation, make sure you use full stops, commas, capital letters, question marks, exclamation marks, speech marks, and if necessary, possessive apostrophes. Okay, so that's showing a nice range of punctuation there. Next, we've got for an appropriate level of detail, try and paint a picture of your experiences by using adjectives. Those are those all important describing words. If complaining about a bad meal, provide the details of what it was like to taste it. Next, we're going to clear paragraphic. So whenever you move on to a different topic, just make sure you show this by changing paragraph. And that way you're showing a nice level of writing skill there. So carrying on from that, when showing your writing skill, it's really important to consider the purpose. So if we're in to persuade, think about those deliberate details that you can include. Um, so if you're talking about something in a positive way, just include those positive details. If you're criticising something, use a lot of negative adjectives, uh, not a lot of negative uh, detail. Use your imagination. Um, if it's to inform, all detail needs to be truly written to inform somebody. So it needs to be neutral of any kind of um, bias, which persuade is full of bias, but this one needs to be neutral and it just needs to give the information as directly as possible. So that's showing that you can adapt to the certain purpose. Um, next is format, really, really important. It, that it needs to be written in the correct person and style to match the format in question. And what I mean by that is person like first person, would be for speech writing where you're talking from your own point of view so i've come to talk to you today about this whereas third person is more distant like where we would write an article and the examiner would need to see that you've made that adjustment that deliberate choice in both purpose and format so this is what i've included as a good standard of writing but this is just um like kind of like an average example of good good writing so the host standards of hygiene did not meet my own. My wine glass had a bright pink smear of someone else's lipstick on it. It was disgusting. So you see there that I've got that detail, the exact detail of, of what was wrong with the actual um, restaurant experience. And I've also used my exclamation mark here um, in it was disgusting. So I'm using that word disgusting there to describe it. Once we had ordered, we had a 30 minute wait during that time, a baby cried constantly and the parents just ignored it and kept on eating their dinner. I was tempted to go and see if I could calm the child. No member of staff spoke up. So just trying to kind of organise it in a kind of clear way, clear, logical way, as well as provide that extra detail to kind of paint a picture of, of, of what was truly wrong with the experience. And also it's something that's quite relatable for the audience because we've all been in those situations where it's been quite unpleasant like this um, and no one would like to be in this kind of situation. So I've taken those kind of details and, and tried to apply it to this uh, situation that the exam question's given me. 
So these are some of the different purposes you might have to write for. First of all, we've got persuade, which is when you put your views across to change the mind of the reader. I would say this one tends to be quite powerful in that you've got to change how someone is thinking. So you've got to kind of um, really kind of think about the pros and cons about things. You know, it depends what you're trying to argue. Are you trying to argue that something is good or that, uh, that something is bad? Really trying to get those details in there to get your point across is really important there. Next, we've got inform and explain. So this is when we provide factual information and we're aiming for clarity. So this tends to be kind of very simple sentences without much description that tend to be impartial. And that means that you, you don't really have a side that you pick, whereas persuade you have a certain goal or an aim that you're trying to achieve. Next we have is describe. So that's when we use descriptive language to paint a picture, you'll give a clear idea of what something is like. So you could do something like describe uh, your first day as starting a new college, you know, and you'd be talking about the, the feelings and the experience of that. Next, you have write about your own views. And that's just about how you feel something about something. That's a deeply personal purpose. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's quite, some of the purposes are quite similar and they do kind of overlap, but the examiner needs to see that you've made a certain effort to the purpose that they wish for you to display. So these are a few of the different formats that you'll come across in the exam. Now I'm not going to ask you to write all of these, but they may ask you. Okay, so it kind of is a way of testing that you can you can write in all different formats so they don't actually tell you which ones are going to come up in the exam. So it might be any of the few that I'm going to explain here. So first of all we've got articles. Now these tend to always have a heading, they're written in third person no greeting and start off with a hook so that's like an interesting sentence that grabs the reader's attention next we have speeches these tend to be written in the first person so it's like written from a person's point of view saying i they can be very personal and they can use a lot of emotion next we have emails which is written to a specific person or persons they usually have a greeting an email address a subject and a sign off so if you do want to kind of look into these into a little bit more depth, just to have a little bit of a search on Google, read some articles, listen to some speeches, and that will really help you get the idea for what the examiner is looking for there. Some other formats you might be asked to write are these. Um, so we've got reports. So reports inform the reader about something and give a balanced account of what happened. These can be quite difficult, and if, if you are struggling with writing reports, be sure to check out um, the video I made on reports, or check out the one on uh, Write On Resources. I did a really good video on report writing. Next, we've got letters. So this is written to a specific person or person, same as an email. Um, formal greeting, it's got the sender's address on the top right, and the recipient's address uh, below this on the left and then the main body and a formal sign off. Now examiners are less um, are less concerned with the traditional layout of a letter. They just want you to show that you know that know what a letter is, if that makes sense. But if you are one of those people who, who worry about the exact format, um, be sure to check out my video where I'll go into more detail on this. Next we have leaflets. So leaflets have a clear structure using subheadings, often using numbered lists and bullet points. Now, some of these formats kind of couple very well with certain purposes. So leaflets tend to go really well with informing, um, same as reports, whereas letters can be really good for like expressing your own point of view or persuading. So they might ask you to persuade a friend to go on holiday with them or something like that. But you can never really predict these. So just try and be as knowledgeable on all of these as possible and um, you should be fine. So these are some language techniques that you could be using. So we have rule of three, which is when we use three describing words. So for example, you could say someone is smart, funny, and kind. So three three words that kind of um, emphasize the feeling that you're trying to get across. This doesn't really work well if you have three words that, that have a slightly different meaning. So for example, if you had two positive words with one negative word, it wouldn't make too much sense. So it kind of just, makes that compliment all the more powerful or you can use it in a negative sense so if i was talking about a restaurant i could say it was unclean dirty and disgusting and even though those words are very very similar it just makes that a little bit more powerful that i've included three 
Next, we've got alliteration, which is when we have words that begin with the same letter, and it kind of creates a rhythmic effect. We see this a lot in poetry, um, also a lot in advertising, you know, things like Kit Kat. It has that kind of creates an emphasis, this, this kind of push to the word of that K there. Next, we have statistics, which is where we use numbers and statistics to support your point. And you are allowed to make up these statistics. You don't have to memorize them. So you could say 25% of people managed to pass their level two functional skills writing exam after listening to this video. Well, at least I hope so. Next, we have informal language. So language that's more suited to kind of social settings. And next, we have idioms or slogans, things like it just takes some elbow grease. So for this exam, it's really important that you manage your time. So keep in mind, you have two questions. That's 36 marks in total. Question one, you get 21 marks and it's 250 to 300 words. So that means it's looking for a lot more detail for this question. So use a lot of your descriptive words, your adjectives there to kind of paint a picture for the audience. Question two is going to be a much shorter written response. It's usually going to be um, something like an email. Um, it's just a little bit shorter and, and it requires a little bit of a less detailed response. Um, you can see that they only want about 200 to 250 words and they will, they will actually say that on the exam paper. And this one has got about 25 minutes. So just make sure that you keep an eye on the time um, and you should be absolutely fine. So just think question one requires a greater depth. Question two, a little bit less, but keep an eye on those key skills that we mentioned earlier. I'm going to provide a link to the uh, download of this, power, this PowerPoint um, just so that you don't have to write too much down and you've got any of this information that you need. So we've got talked about a lot of terms and a lot of techniques which you can just um, keep for your own leisure to look through um, as and when you wish. Okay, so finally, if you did like the video, please like and subscribe uh, or just let me know in the comments, especially if there's anything I can do to improve. But once again, guys, thanks for watching.